Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official study guide, study manual for 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure this book is in front of you. There is no such thing as a preparation for T's without the official study manual. Today we'll continue the topic of proportions, a topic that we've been added for the last three days and today is going to be the last day on the topic. Yesterday we did a couple of problems I told you before that appeared in the older edition. T is 5. T is 5 that I'm holding in my hand here was published in 2012 and I have solved every single problem as I told you yesterday that appeared in this book. If you're interested in getting some more practice as I said you will find the solutions to all of these problems on my channel. Just search for Kishwani T is 5 day 1 and that's where the series begins there are 80, 80, 80 videos in the series go through them you'll find some more practice there and the problem that we're about to do today and the next one the two problems that we're going to do today they both are straight from this book here on the topic of proportions what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the problem to you it's already on the blackboard I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to give you the un unobstructed view I'm going to get out of your way I want you to pause the video at that point and then do the problem yourself first. Make sure you do it first yourself before you resume the video and then we'll, do, we'll work on it together. You will find that you will get a lot more out of it than simply sitting there and uh, looking at the screen, staring at the screen passively. All right? here we go. It says, so apparently we are running a catering business. Apparently somebody is running a cater catering business. That's how it's pronounced, I believe. Uh, you must understand, it's not my native language. You understand? Uh, we, are, we are running a catering business I believe catering business and uh, this lady from her experience she knows that if she has to serve 72 people that she needs these beverages in the amount of four gallons of punch three gallons of lemonade and two, gall two gallons of tea but she has to serve 240 people so the question simply is if we need four gallons of punch three gallons of lemonade and two gallons of tea to serve 72 people how many gallons are needed to serve 240 people. Now, when I say how many gallons, they're not asking you to do the breakdown. They're not asking for individual things, just looking for how many gallons total. How many gallons total. So don't waste your time trying to figure out each one of them separately. How many total gallons of beverages are needed if she is to serve 240 people. Do it yourself. Oh, here we go. Since they are only interested in the total number of gallons and not the breakdown, total number of gallons is what we should work with. That's what we should concentrate on. So let's figure out the total number of gallons we need to serve 72 people. That's a 5 and 4, 9. Apparently we need 9 gallons to serve 72 people. The question is how many gallons we need to serve 240 people. There you go. Now we can set it up as a proportion problem. Let's do it. So just remember this is 9 gallons. We're going to make a note of it someplace here so we don't forget it. A total of 9 gallons are needed to serve 72 people. So here we go. Gallons over people. We need 9 gallons to serve 72 people. The question is how many gallons do we need? How many gallons do we need to serve 240 people? This is what we need to solve. Let's do it together, okay? I'm going to get rid of this marker because it's getting quite light. And when they get quite light, they're not quite legible. And that is no bloody good, as one would say in the desert. Let's do it together, shall we? So we don't need any, any we no longer need the bottom part, we already have it. We already have the information. We also don't need this part. We just want to concentrate on the x and solve for it. So if you multiply, if you multiply both sides by 240, 
this 240 disappears from here and we are left with the x by itself so x equals to 240 times 9 on the top over 72 there we go let's reduce it shall we let's see what we can do let's reduce it now what can we do well I see 72 here 7 plus 2 is listen carefully 7 plus 2 is 9 as long as as long as the sum of the digits SUM sum of the digits is divisible by 3 then the number itself is divisible by 3 these are some of the basic things that you should know, that you should know about, the, about math and you will find those basic things here I am plugging another thing on my channel so there is another series of video called believe it or not basic math search for Keshwani basic math day one that's where it begins there are 100 videos use make use of those videos if you feel that you're a little bit weak in your foundations of basic arithmetic that's what it is it says basic math but actually it's very simple arithmetic if your foundation is weak go through those videos and you'll you'll find it helpful so this is divisible by 3 that's divisible by 3 I'm going to divide top and bottom by 3 shall we how many 3's the 7 have 7 has 2 3's 2 3's are 6 after we take away 6 from the 7 we have a remainder of 1 what happens to that 1 1 goes and joins the 2 and becomes a 12 and 12 has 4 3's 4 3's are 12 there you go since we divided the bottom by since we divide the bottom by 3 we must divide the top by 3 I'm going to use this one not that one I'm saving that one you can either do this or that I'm saving that one because that says you can see and I hope you know this it's a nice multiple of 2, 24 which I did not realize as I, as I was doing it I realized it so let's not squander it if we divide 9 by 3 it becomes 3 and 24, 240 divided by 24 is going to go away and just becomes 10 10 times 3 is what x is x is equal to 10 times 3 apparently we will need 30 gallons of booze oops did I say booze? I meant to say beverage do you understand? an honest mistake on my part let's do one more so we'll, we're going to need 30 gallons of beverage to take care of 240 people number nine in case you're wondering why it began with number eight is because this was a continuation from yesterday there were five problems in the book that we did then we did two extra problems from T5 T5 yesterday number six and seven and today we do eight and nine Again the same thing, I'm going to set it up on the, on the blackboard. As soon as the problem is on the blackboard, pause the video, do it yourself first. We have two people here. We are told that A, Mr. A can read. A can read. A reads 10 pages per hour. We are told that B reads 18 pages per hour. And we are told that both, both have to need, both need to read 288 page book for homework. The question simply is, how much sooner How much sooner will B get done? Well, how do we know that B is going to get done first? Well, obviously B is going to get done first because B is reading faster. B reads 18 pages in one hour. They can only read 10 pages per hour. They are given an assignment at school. They, are, they, are, they have to read a book which has 288 pages at their respective speeds. question is, how much sooner will B get done? I'm going to give you two seconds to, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. Let's do it together, shall we? We need the room, so I have to erase everything. So here's your A, and here's your B. Set it up with a proportion. So I see the pages first, I'm going to put pages in the top and here's the hour. This is for A. A reads 10 pages in one hour. 
we have to read 288 pages. Question is how many hours? Just bring the x to the, x to the top here, bring the 10 to the bottom and that's it. x would equal 288 over 10. Or if you want to do it in two steps, you can do it in two steps. 10 times x will be 288 and then divide both sides by 10. There you go. 288 divided by 10, that's very easy. You just have to move the decimal. So it turns out that x is 228.8 hours. Instead of calling it x, I'm going to give it a different name. Let's not call this unknown x. I'm going to call it small letter a. The small letter a represents the number of hours that Mr. A will take. That way we don't have to keep separate in our mind what does x represent, what does y represent. I forgot what was y. You shouldn't have to do the Turing exam. Use the symbols that are logical. Let's do the same thing here. Again, we can set it up the same way. Pages over hours. And this guy can read 18 pages in one hour. The question is, how long will it take to read 288 pages? And let's call this unknown B. Small letter B, which will represent the number of hours that are taken to read the book by Mr. B. To have the book read by Mr. B. Let's find out. Shall we? Again, same thing. 18 times B would equal 288. 18, 18 times B would equal 288. And therefore B equals 288 over 18. We need to leave, we need to reduce this thing. We need to work on this thing. I'm not going to do away at the bottom here. Let's do it in the top here. And we don't need any of this here. Let's just do it on the top so we have more room. What we are working on is this guy. 288 divided by 18. I'm just going to reduce it, okay? And when you're reducing top and bottom, all you have to do is find some common factor. It does not matter what comes to your mind as long as your arithmetic is correct. I'm just going to stop it too. Because they are both even numbers, they are both multiples of 2. I am just going to start with 2. Why 2? Because I am a baby. I don't want to start with something complicated. So if you 18, divide 18 by 2, we get 9. Here we get 1. Here we get 4. Here we get 4. Wow, there we go. Again, you see here, 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Since the sum of the digits in this number is a multiple of 3, this number is a multiple of 3. And so is this one. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by 3. Another thing that you should know is that if the sum of the, if the, sum of the digits in a number is a multiple of 9, then the number itself is a multiple of 9. Here we have 8 plus 8, 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9. There you go, 9 is divisible by 9. So we could actually divide the top and bottom by 9 and be done with it in one step. But I'm going to do it in two baby steps, okay? We're going to divide by 3 first and then we're going to have to try to divide by 3 one more time because 3 times 3 is 9 to finish the job. Otherwise we can just divide by 9 and be done with it. Let's divide by 3. So 9 is going to become 3 and 14 has 4 3's. 4 3's are 12. 4 3's are 12. After we take away 12 from the 14 we have a remainder of 2. We have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? That 2 goes and joins the 4 and becomes a 24 and 24 has that's not right. 24 has how many? How many threes? Six threes are 18. 24 has eight threes. Eight threes are 12. How did I know that six was not right? Because six plus four would have been 10, and 10 is not divisible by three. That's how I knew that I made a mistake. So 24 has eight threes. So here we have three, and here we have 48. 48 is four plus eight is 12. Also, again, it's divisible by three. Let's try one more time. Divide by three becomes a one. Four has one three. After we take away 3 from the 4, the remainder, remainder, re remaining one goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18. And 18 has 16. Voila. Voila. So Mr. B takes, B takes, B takes eight, 16 hours. B takes 16 hours. Now we're going to do this one more time. Now we're going to do this one more time, but this time we're going to divide by 9. Let's divide by 9. 288 over 18. So I'm going to start out with the 2 like we did before. So 18 becomes a 9. This is a 1. This is a 4. And this is a 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. 
So we're going to divide by 9. So 9 is going to go away, becomes 1. How many 9s does 14 have? 14 has 1 9. After we take away 9 from the 14, we have a remainder of 5. You have to be able to keep that in your mind. That 5 goes and joins the 4 and becomes a 54. And 54 is made up of 6 9s. All done. If you like, I can do it longhand. You can do it longhand. 144, 144 divided by 9. How many 9s does 1 have? How many lines does 1 have? 1 has no 9s. So what happens to it? It goes and joins the 4 and becomes a 14. And 14 has 1 9. After we take away 9, after we take away the 9 from the 14, we have a remainder of 5. So let's do it here. 144 divided by 9. We're going to do it together, okay? One more time. How many how many nines does one have? One has no nines. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins a 4 and becomes a 14. And 14 has one nine. 14 has one nine. After we take away 9 from the 14, we have a remainder of 5. The only difference is that in this method, you're keeping it in your mind that it has a remainder of 5. What happens to that 5? That 5 goes and joins the 4, joins the 4 and becomes a 54. That 5 goes and joins the 4 and becomes a 54. And 54 has 6 nines. Well, 54 has 6 nines. And how do I know that 54 has 6 nines? Again, there's a logic to it. Mathematics is very logical. What we just claim is that 54 has 6 nines. In other words, 6 nines. 54 has 6 nines. 54 is made up of 6 nines. How do I know that? Because we know 6 times 10. Is 60. 60 is made up of 10 6. And if you take away 1 6 from 60, if you just take away 1 6 from the 60, you will end up at 54. So if 60 is made up of 10 6, and 54 stands to reason, must have 9 6s in it. Must have been made up of 9 6s. That's how I know it. Anyway, let's finish up the story here. So the question is, how much sooner will B get done? We just have to take a difference. 8, uh, 2, and 1. Looks like Mr. B is going to get done approximately 13 hours before A gets done reading the book. That's all. That was the end of that problem. That was the end of that topic, proportions. And that is the end of the chapter as well. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll begin the new chapter. I'm just going to turn the page and see what it is. I'm just curious. Oh, interesting. I did wonder about that. The next chapter, chapter number 28, deals with ratios. Interesting. Interesting because as I was going through and making the notes for the, for the lecture, in the old book, in this book here, 5th edition, both the ratios and proportions appear in the same chapter. So as I was making my notes, I had to take away all the problems dealing with the concept of ratios. And I just thought they, they're just done with it. There, there are no more ratios. But apparently they have it in two separate chapters. So we'll, we'll deal with it tomorrow when we when we meet again. If you wish to get hold of me, send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.